Hi, uh, my name is Adrian Jackson. I am artistic director and founder of Cardboard Citizens and uh, very pleased to welcome anybody who's watching to the second of a short series of conversations which I'm having with a number of pioneers of the theater of the oppressed, important people in theater of the oppressed who have really made a difference worldwide um, as People probably know um, the Theatre of the Press was founded by Augusto Boal, who was our good friend and a huge influence on our work. Uh, last week we spoke to Sanjo Ganguli, um, and our thoughts are with him now because uh, a super cyclone has hit West Bengal, so we're very much hoping he's okay and his team are okay. This week I'm very, very happy to, to welcome Barbara Santosh, who is an absolutely seminal figure in the Theatre of the Oppressed, worked uh, with CTO Rio, Centre of the Theatre of the Oppressed in Rio de Janeiro uh, for many years, was effectively Augusta's right-hand person for a very, very long time. And we've known each other for some time. So I think by the magic of uh, theatre, we're, we're now going to welcome Barbara. Um, and uh, yes, here she is. Hi, Hi, Barbara. Hi. Really nice to have you. Thank you so much for um, agreeing to speak to us and I know you're incredibly busy both in Berlin where you're speaking from uh, and in Brazil where you still continue to do uh, a lot of work. So I'm um, looking forward to this conversation just to clarify again for viewers we're going to spend about the first half hour with Barbara, me just gently probing Barbara about her work um, which is a very short time to encompass a lot of work. So on occasion, I am going to interrupt, and this is my interruption signal, um, so we don't talk over each other too much. Um, but while that's going on, please uh, submit comments to us right, left, and center. And in the second half of our conversation, in the second half hour, um, I'll, I'll be uh, ventilating those comments and launching them at Barbara. Uh, and we'll give Barbara a little bit of time at the end because importantly, she has a book which she needs you to tell you about and it's available in English. Um, so that's me, Barbara. Um, I think it'd be great for people to understand how you came to the Theatre of the Oppressed briefly. Yeah, thank you for the invitation. I saw the problem with San Joy Ganguly and that, uh, I want to send my solidarity and big heart for San Joy and Jonathan Street. I hope everything would be okay with them. Yeah, and we are here for any of their necessity. And so also I want to say uh, that at the moment in CTO as well, also they are facing kind of uh, crisis and they have a campaign help CTO, yeah, and then uh, anyone could find this, this would be a nice, uh, a nice thing too. So uh, I am, I'm a teacher, I'm a sociologist originally, I'm not a person that comes from theater, I come from other areas, yeah, education was my main area. And then I start, uh, I, I got to know theater of the oppressed as a tool to work. Yeah, we want to communicate inside of the, the community in school. Yeah, and we, uh, we want to come with people together, yeah? parents, uh, colleagues and students to, to talk together. And one of our colleagues saw Boao and his team in the school doing exactly that. And they told for us, why not? We do it. You know, I saw this was great. Everybody in the school was making a discussion about racism, about uh, gender, about inequality. They have several plays. Why not we use it? And uh, we told, wow, great, let's use it. But we are imagined to invite them to play for us. And then we invite them, but they told for us, no, we cannot play for you. You have to play your own questions. And then, yeah, we made it. And then we started the TO. <laughs> And that was the beginning of a, a, a long journey. How many years ago was that, Barbara? Uh, this is more than 30 years. <laughs> more than 30 years ago. Yeah, yeah. And for a while, were you still being a teacher and doing TO alongside while you were, while, while you were learning? Or did you abandon the teaching to fully launch into TO? Yeah, first of all, a teacher never abandoned the teaching. <laughs> like, this is something that I want to be 
you have a kind of attitude, yeah, like that. No, no. So uh, was in the beginning, we we work with theater of the press with foreign theater inside the schools, and then we took this as our work actually. And then I made this one year. Actually, I I, I was doing for and Boal got no us because he hear about us because we start to go for the whole schools in our district and then universities and we got a little bit famous. Uh, if I can say, and Boal heard about us, and then he came to see our our presentation. And after that, I came close and close to CTO because I want to learn more the method, and I I attend the courses and things like that. But immediately I was inside because in the in the one year after that, Boal was candidate in in the part that I was member, and then it was like uh, just things come together. It's, it's interesting. Uh, I have so much the same experience of a kind of love at first sight. I mean, I remember when I first came across the work, I just immediately knew this was something I had to do, something I want to do, something I just completely understood. Um, and there's no going back from it. Was there a CTO Rio before you started or were you effectively a founder member? No, no, they start before. When I got no them, they were already a, a kind of, um, let's say, an organization, but an informal organization. Yeah, they are not an NGO. This was uh, my contribution. When I come in, this was like uh, we work to formalize it. We create really uh, one organization that could apply for projects and everything. And I think, um, I mean, it's a wonderful story, of course, um, uh, Augusto's legislative theatre project, the original legislative theatre project. It would be lovely to hear you were so close to it, and it was obviously in the first flush of your joining the company. Be lovely to hear a little bit. How was it for you that 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 campaign? Yeah, it was for me. It was so interesting the whole process because I was member of the Workers Party. Yeah. So before I know Boao, I was inside of the part I was member, and it's really active actually. And then when I when I come with the theater and the, he was candidate for the same party, was kind of everything coming together. You know, it's like the sense of wow, work so nice, mm -hmm. and it was a a kind of pleasure and work and activism mm -hmm. and being creative, everything together. But when I, I come to CTO, uh, they already have this decision. Yeah, it's like they made the whole process of decision. I was not part of that. Right. Was it really part because didn't have much people that was member of the party. Yeah, and then I came as a kind of uh, the political side of mm -hmm. it. Yeah, and then this it was amazing situation for me. This was really amazing because everything come together and was discovered for them and for me. It's a very interesting. You know, speaking to Sanjoy last week, I didn't mention um, that in our very first conversation, I think that I had with him about 30 years ago, he admitted to once calling himself a Stalinist. He was actually a Stalinist. You don't meet many people who admit to ever calling themselves Stalinist. I'm interested, why was the Workers' Party such a fertile ground for Augusto's work? And were there tensions? between uh, essentially the Marxism of the Workers' Party and, and Boal's own methodology and free thinking methodology. So what is, is interesting, the, the, the base things that is, is together, yeah, is like the Workers' Party in that moment was, was really based in communities. We are kind of nucleus. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I was part of my neighborhood mm -hmm. nucleus. And then it's like, this was the way of working of the party. Yeah, have several uh, groups of people in the neighborhood or because of uh, profession, depend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and was the same base of the theater of the press. Yeah, it's like going to community, organize people together, come together. Mm -hmm. But what was uh, 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 the, the first uh, tension is like in our work as a theater of the press, we, we don't ask people for pre uh, position. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People come, or we want to to address everybody. Doesn't matter we with with a preposition they have. 
yeah. or political yeah. position of they believe in this or that. Let's see what we believe together in the process. Yeah, it's much more about the process, much more about coming together. And then for the parties, something else. Yeah, for the parties like uh, when you come, for instance, one of the things that really I took distance of the parties because I, in my neighborhood, that was not a rich neighborhood, it was really poor neighborhood. I wanted so much that my neighbors come for the party. I was invited always my neighbors to come. But it was so difficult for my friends or people that was my, my neighbors. And they come once and they give up because they say for me, ah, I cannot understand these people. They start to speak so and they are they already want that we're going to read things and we're going to believe things. And then I already have this problem with my new club, you know, it's like the party. When I come for, for Theatre of the Oppressed, for me it was like, wow, this is the thing that I really want. I yeah. really want something open that attracts people and that we can have a conversation, that we can understand, uh, exchange, you know, like, but uh, what I really appreciate in the Theatre of the Oppressed, that the starting point is the place of the people where you are. I think that, uh, so it's questions rather than answers, isn't it? I mean, this is our fundamental goal is to seek questions and questions and questions. And uh, it seems to me you're echoing um, Augusto's own journey, because, of course, he started off as a Marxist, um, but in later life, when asked whether he was a Marxist, I remember him answering, I'm a Boalist, you know, <laughs> which is which is about right. Um, okay, I, I, it occurs to me that perhaps we should say very quickly what that legislative theatre campaign was, because I suppose I'm assuming that people knew about it. So it was Augusto's campaign to be elected to the what is effectively the council of uh, Rio de Janeiro, correct? Yeah. Well, was several things at the same time. One is like Boal was not much believing in the possibility of really being a, be a representative. Yeah? And then he was always saying, uh, vote in the, the party, not in me. It's like mm -hmm. a vote for us, for mm -hmm. our people, for our team, because we have a great team. Yeah, and this I think this position was so attractive for the people actually <laughs> because he, he was elected. And the proposal of him, he or the whole time he was saying, like, what we want to do, we want to do theater. This is to be honest, what I really want to do is theater. And myself, me as Augusto Boal, I am not expert in doing law. I don't want to learn to do law. I, I, I just want to open a space for the people express their necessity. I want to create space for people brought their necessity and exchange with other people. And then the proposal was so simple. It's like if the, the people could be artists, maybe the same people could be also representative of their own uh, desires or their own necessity as also a citizen. And essentially, um Augusto was elected, as we know, uh, for one term, and to support his um, his uh, position, um, uh, uh, CTO Rio formed how many 30, 30 different groups or so around uh, the around the uh, the city to work on different issues What's using so forum theatre. Was it more than that? It was probably more. How so crazy because we are a lot of people. We are the the people that would be the normal team, but uh, we are not the normal team. We are a lot of people, it's a lot of volunteer because everybody was curious and everybody has a desire of some kind of uh, different political action, some kind of uh, political experience. And then we are a lot of people. And then we were working in the lot of communities. We have uh, more than 50 uh, areas that we start, you know, and then we make right. some groups. Right. Of course, not all of them become a group. But we have around 20 that really become long-term group. Long-term in the sense that uh, we create a group, we create a forum play, we have a discussion, we present for other people, and uh, we have a lot of proposal for the chamber, for the for our our okay. team as a, 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 a Jose, as a law. And uh, altogether, I think there were 13 or 14 laws, as I remember it, which, which became laws as a result of this incredibly grassroots democratic theatrical process. It was more than 30 uh, official proposals. 
Yeah, it's like a lot of official pro from that 13 become uh, a great reality, true. yeah, because it's a long process. Sure, I always love the thing. I mean, I think uh, Augusto loved these formulations. Um, I think he said to me at one time, you know, first of all, I, I, I sought to politicize theater and then I sought to theatricalize politics, yeah. <laughs> which, is, which is kind of neat. Um, anyway, look, we could talk for ages just about that, but let's not. Um, let's talk about you and now and your work now. So tell us a little bit, first of all, perhaps about your work with Coringa, about your um, the work with the Madalenas, and perhaps last, because you've already spoken about it a little, tell us about what you're still doing with CTO Rio, even though you're in a different country. So, uh, 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 as you know, now I'm, I'm in Berlin, yes, like uh, since 10 years already, I'm here, and uh, like we that work as a collective, we, we cannot be like a, a single person. <laughs> we don't know what to do with as a single one. And mm -hmm. then with, with uh, Till Bauman, Christoph Leust, we create Kuringa, that is space for theater of the oppressed in, in Berlin. It's a space for a lot of research because over these 10 years, I'm doing a lot of research, especially in aesthetics of the oppressed. Yeah, we are creating a, a different ways of work with that is going deep in what we call sound and rhythm and path yeah it's like uh, our plays and everything also we create several community groups here in berlin uh, and over these years and this is a space also for create this community and that uh, we have uh, a qualification program too yeah that uh, we start as a together team yeah we start as a a, a partner partnership with other European colleagues mm -hmm. and we develop it and become our our program here here in Berlin yeah mm -hmm. this is the main work that we are doing in Coringa there's groups networks qualification and investigation it's it's a boring question but it's one that people do want to know usually um, particularly at this difficult moment how how, how is funding how how do you support the, the organization how does the organization support itself this is a great question you know because here in berlin when when i i start kuringa uh, i you know i come from a situation that being coordinator of our organization for more than 14 years i was the coordinator of center of theater of the press for 14 years and i have this responsibility that everybody that works in organizations has that uh, guarantee work for the people organize money projects mm -hmm. and i was really tired of that i didn't want it mm -hmm. really and uh, coincidentally my colleagues also didn't want it. and then we want completely autonomy we just want to do what we want mm -hmm. because of that we didn't make official the organization yeah for the first years kuringa was informal organization mm -hmm. it's like when we want to make a project we just call some partners some colleagues and say Oh, we have a, a chance to make a project. Do you want to help us as umbrella? Because here in Berlin, several organizations could be umbrella for others. Yeah. So and then we become really um, uh, informal because we, each one of us, has their own practice, their own way of working. And then when we come together, the main thing that we want to do was investigation. We have, have space for investigating and, and development of the matter. So the time was passing, and now we are we become one formal organization. Yeah, the formal organization. Mm -hmm. that, but the main thing that we do here that guarantee the whole year of the the, the year is the qualification program. I am doing two uh, two times a year a long term course. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, May and July in the summer and, and the spring. And this is the money that we keep for the base of the organization, you know? And then when we want to make projects, something else, and then we go up. But we have the, the base is guaranteed for our own qualification process. And in terms of um, that, that's very, very clear. Thank you for that. In terms of the projects, which are perhaps the most important ones of Coringa, I mean, activism projects in, in Berlin, can you give us a sense of what are the things you're most working on? You 
till this strange moment happened uh, you were still working on what which groups and and what what subject matters yeah yeah see uh, from 2010 uh, this year after the passing away of boa was so a strange moment for the whole world of theater of the oppressed at the same time was really deep uh, sadness and a lot of a little bit of loss at the same time was the time of people all all over the world like people was investing a lot going deep i don't know if you have a, a year like 2009 with most festivals or most uh, activities collected it was incredible yeah we were together if you remember we were together in in pula after the almost Weeks after Augusto's death, we both had to speak. It was it was terrible, terrible, terrible moment. And Julian was there, of course. In Pula, in Austria, in other places too. You know, a lot of yeah. places that have a as a kind of power from feel uh, uh, say empower, find out kind of power it was really incredible. And then from 2010, for me personally, as a practitioner, uh, was a kind of decade in one year. Yeah, it's like I, I, I start really deep investigate the steps of the oppressed. And also I start this laboratory that I call Madalena Laboratory. That was space that uh, was for only women's space that we want to investigate how uh, could we represent a kind of oppression that we face? We face oppressions because we are women. Because we are women, we face a lot of oppression. But it's so difficult to represent this oppression. Because when we represent this oppression, it can be really personal. It can be like this woman made is in this situation. We want to make a kind of contextual approach. We want to include the society on stage. Mm -hmm. And we didn't know how to do it, of course. The laboratory was a kind of a step to try out it. And I think it's, it's fair to say it was partly a reaction, was it not, to the fact that uh, Tio was perhaps at that time quite male-dominated? I mean, I mean... Of course, of course. We have several uh, battlefields, actually. Yeah. We yeah. want also that the, the, the women on stage don't look always as idiots as stupid, you know, because you have a kind of play of domestic violence and make a forum and the solution is, okay, yeah. I divorce, I yeah. go out. Yeah. It's like the, everything is in the shoulder of the woman. She has to decide alone. She goes out of the whole uh, violence situation alone. She's there because she, she chooses it, you know, it's more or less like that. And then we wanted to bring the whole influence that women has. The woman has the promise of a better life if she finds a perfect partner. Yeah, it, it will be a beautiful family if you have children, especially two, a boy and a girl. Yeah, and everything will be forever, has to be forever. And then there's a lot of influence that is internalized. Yeah, of course, there's a lot of uh, cop in the head. Yeah. At the same time, concretely around her, the family pressure, the society pressure, because it's not easy to be a, a, a lonely, for instance, a lonely mother. Yeah, if you are, it's so difficult the life for you, you know? Or if uh, you are divorced, even, it's, it's, it's crazy, but it's still a challenge for women, yeah? Mm -hmm. Or if you want to get uh, your job, you have children, you don't have a uh, partner, and then it's, it's everything so difficult. And then we want to put this on the stage. But of course, just to complement, of course, we are also um, uh, bored by the situation that the majority of this play was produced by men with groups of women, of course. Mm -hmm. No, I, uh, I'm probably part of um, what you were battling against. I recognise my position, um, but I, I'm, it's so important what you've produced there. And perhaps a little bit later, you could talk about where the Madalenas has got to now, because it's a, it's a whole international network. It has its own festivals, its own projects, um, and it's a very substantial achievement. Um, I wanted to, we, we've got sort of five minutes more of you and me, and then I'm going to launch other people's questions. So I, I was just one more thing on you in Berlin now. Um, what particular groups 
uh, what particular topics are you working with, or is it all the Madalena's work? It's just the, the, the larger general topic of, of the oppression of women, or is it specific groups, or is it anything very particularly to do with the situation in Germany right now? So we made with Madalena Berlin, of course, we are a lot of different Madalenas. Yeah? What I appreciate in our network that uh, for us it's possible, for instance, being together to talk about privilege. Usually when we talk this in the mixed uh, areas of theater of the oppressed, sometimes people feel offended that you say you have privilege, but you have privilege. What type of, is, is that, is reality. Among women, we say you women that we are white from the North, you have much more privilege than the women from the South. So let's share this privilege, you know? And also, also when we are uh, m black women, we are minority. Even I am a black woman, I cannot guarantee that majority of us is, is there, you know? And then when we meet, of course we face racism. You know, it's like, of course, because we grow up, all of us, in the really racist societies. It's so difficult when we meet that we not experience racism. But what is, is interesting in our network that we speak about that. And then when I, oh, we, have, we, we want much more, have more indigenous uh, groups of women, but it's so hard because the indigenous is under really incredible oppression. You know, just, all of us is under oppression, but you know, when we have, a, we are accumulated, we are black and then we say uh, uh, sexism and racism. But as the indigenous, the people from the original uh, groups in Latin America, for example, they face a lot of uh, other questions too. Yeah. So in this group, what we are talking about a lot, you know, it's like because when we say that we have this uh, contextual approach, everything comes together. Yeah. We cannot talk about uh, gender without talk about race or social class. Yeah. We are in, in, in the situation of talking about, for instance, Corona crisis. We are talking about violence, yeah, yeah. because is is a lot of that. They are together. So, and then just to answer you, the, the the groups we have groups here in Berlin. We over these two years we are working with the top. No means no. This is a kind of European topic. It's not just from Germany. This a, we work as legislative theater, but we we really uh, uh, how say. Uh, advanced somehow in the legislative way because we took the whole we took out the whole hierarchical way of work on it. Yeah, we create what we call feminist legislative theater. I think there'll be some questions very directly about that in a moment. Um, I just wanted to pick up two things that you said. Uh, one, one some time ago, and one just now. It, it's an ongoing challenge and attention, isn't it, in the creation of forum theater to avoid victimizing the protagonist, the balance of the protagonist as fighter, as survivor, against depicting the oppression which she suffers is 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 the tension, and it's sometimes. Uh, a mistake that people make when putting together forum pieces when when they actually end up without intending to depicting um, the protagonist as as a victim, the victim survived thing. I was I think it's very interesting what you're talking about, sort of intersectionality there essentially, um, because again, sometimes people look at TO from the outside. And they think we're very simplistic people. <laughs> they think we have one issue, we're arguing about this or we're arguing about that, and that we have a simplified view of the world. But actually what you're describing is completely the reverse. It's, it's a complex view of the world. Completely, because my way of work actually is really uh, getting the complexity. I am not interested in the personal stories. In, our, in my work, I really stress the mechanism of oppression. Mm -hmm. I want to understand which kind of mechanism is included in the oppression that we are facing. If we don't understand the whole uh, picture, it's so difficult that uh, we try out the strategies. Because of that, I ask less and less the audience come, come on stage with one proposal. Mm -hmm. I ask the audience, meet together, really discuss before the forum and come together with collective strategy. As I believe much less, less, less and less. And then these ideas of heroes that come on stage and go into to solve the problem. Yeah, we have to have much more commitment when people come from the audience. I don't want miracle. I just want that each one of us 
take their own responsibility, their own possibility. But we have to know, we have to join forces. Because yes, I don't want to change anything. This is very nice because it allows me, I think, to segue gently into starting to incorporate some of the questions, but also asking questions which I very much want to ask. You're, you're now really, you've started talking about uh, about jokering, really. Um, and yeah, yeah, one of the comments here, which I'm following, is a, is a member of Cardboard Citizens who was present at the festival in Austria, which we spoke about um, and saw you jokering. And and uh, she did an intervention in your show. In fact, uh, she's called Joe Allett. Uh, she's an actor who's done lots of work with us. Um, and you are one of the world's great jokers. I think I can say that without fear of contradiction. What um, I think both of us spend quite a lot of time training jokers. And you were talking about uh, when we spoke earlier in the week. You were talking about a sort of form of supervision you're doing of jokers in Rio, even at this distance. Can you tell us a bit about how that works and, 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 and the process you have for training jokers? Yes, like the, the, this is also one of the reasons that I wrote my first book. Yeah, it's like we can talk about the book afterwards, but this we is. We'll talk about the Yes, I, I, do, I, I wrote this book. Why? Because in the theater of the oppress, I was much more. I, I want one of the, my fight is like put my, more women in the position of facilitator, but mm -hmm. also more black people. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I was more. I want more uh, empower people of color, people from communities, because I felt the great injustice in theater of the oppressed to have a, a group of oppressed that was lead but middle class person. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would say the middle class person can come and share that knowledge, but one of the results would be to have people from the community as facilitators as well. You know, it's like to have a woman a facilitator, mm -hmm. black people. You know, it's like a, to have a a diversity and because I wanted so much that and I worked my my areas of work was a lot with people that was not with much for formal work or formal education sorry mm -hmm. it was like people that have access to education but it's like my work in Guinea-Bissau or in Mozambique oh. or in Brazil in favelas or in the northeast area of the Brazil or really poor communities and that my whole effort is like, how could I bring the theory, the principles, the base, the theoretical base for anybody? You know, doesn't matter if you went to university or not. My way of work is like, how could we share the knowledge, the, the base, the politics, the principle, political principle, ph philosophical principles, everything, the aesthetical principle, everything that is there for anybody, you know? So um, I yes I know that I understand that your work is is very fundamentally principle based and of course it's absolutely vital that people understand the very clear principles on which uh, the theatre of the oppressed is built. Um, I was interested when you spoke speaking about sort of supervising jokers in my own experiences. Um, it's incredibly useful to watch jokers at work because it's so much easier to watch somebody who isn't you <laughs> and to notice when they have forgotten to include some person or they've made choices which close down a discussion rather than open it up. And I was wondering, so when you're supervising these um, growing jokers in, in Rio, do you, get, do you get videos of them at work? Uh, how, do you, how do you do that? How do you know what they're doing right and wrong? So uh, uh, first of all, I, I also work a lot per presential, personally in Brazil. Yeah. So uh, the whole thing that we do is like uh, qualification courses, uh, training. Yeah. I yeah. do personally. Yeah. Yeah. You're present I there. also visit their groups. Yeah. yeah. I go with them, yeah. with them in their work. When I am far away, I also stimulate them to write because I think one of the important topics for you learn to be a Coringa, what I call in Portuguese, as like uh, self-criticism. Mm. And then I'm, I, I'm really a focus and develop self-criticism. Mm. And also the, the writing, yeah, you know, because work with the people from the community, majority of them is not uh, used to mm. write, you mm. know, to put what they experience as a text. Mm. And also I, I'm amazed to write, to, to read them, and give back for them questions, observations in their own text. 
What I noticed in one year work, all of them was writing much better. Mm -hmm. and reading them, I could read their practice. You know, I could understand. And also what I noticed is much more deep the discussion when the people find out their own problem, you know, not just me say, of course I can say easily, don't do this, this, that, yeah? But it's better when people notice, hmm, here, that was not working because, you know, this is the, the thing that I tried to out. I mean, in the end, of course, it's the more you do it, <laughs> It's as simple as that, isn't it? The more you do it, the more mistakes you make, the more you realize what you what, what could be different and the easier it gets um, um, wherever you are in the world. Um, okay, let me start to do uh, more officially some of the questions and they touch on things we were speaking about earlier. Um, and I, there was a question here um, really about, um, this is from, this is from a, a, a colleague actually who works with us, Rosa Storak McCreary, who you may know. Um, and she's interested in the differences in how you practice theater of the oppressed as a feminist, women-focused form. I mean, it is teatro do oprimido in 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 in, uh, in Portuguese, um, and she points out as teatro de las oprimidas. Um, what are the what are the qualitative differences in the way you work? Do you think? So I think have several differences. We are discovering, I would not say a difference, but uh, some steps that we advanced by the necessity. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, Something that I learned with Auguste Boal that for me is a kind of guide me always, is like necessity guide me. Yeah, I have to know why I am doing something, with whom and for what. We have to know this together. Yeah, It's like, uh, for instance, we start to ask the audience uh, differently because we, we noticed that uh, the answer that the audience come to us was much more about advise us. We didn't mm -hmm. want that uh, somebody advise us. Yeah. We want to share possibilities. We want to share alternatives. So one thing that uh, we start to do is like, no one can what we all would call uh, intervention by identity. Yes, like when the people replace the people that, uh, like I'm a woman, I replace a woman. Yeah, it's like the way of doing this by identity. I start to use only this way. Like you just come on stage by identity with the place that you could play in your real life. But uh, we make some steps forward. Yeah, and that uh, we start to call the audience to come on stage for their own place, their own social position. What is your space, your position, your condi condition in the society? Let's come on the stage with this experience. Don't try be myself. Don't try live my experience. Come with your own contribution. Because that other difference that we make is like call the audience to come together before they come on stage. Yeah, It's like we allow the audience to make kind of agreement, create a strategy. We call them uh, directly. This that we are playing here, because we don't play particular stories, we play with this approach of the social context, we say for the audience, we are play a structural problem. And then we need to come on stage as society, yeah, with our different possibilities. And then we ask commitment, not advice, commitment to solve the problem. So um, just to be clear about understanding that, um, uh, there, there's actually um, um, the audience discusses together and plans interventions uh, exactly. prior to the intervention. Exactly. Okay, so it's not just who will come, who will come, who will come. It's right, right. What we do after the presentation is call people, say, okay, let's see what we understood as audience, only mm -hmm. to check if we have the same understanding. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is the first step. Mm. And the second step is, is asking the, the audience if they feel that they are part of this problem. Because if they don't are part of the problem, no sense to make it for, for us. Yeah? It's like you have to be part of the problem. Because if you are part of the problem, you are part of the solution. Of yeah. course, if my play is about uh, violence in society, we think that this is a problem of the whole society. But maybe some people think not. This is not my problem. This don't happen in my home. This is not a problem of my society. Okay, it's okay. Don't need to do anything. You're not forced. 
And I just wanted to clarify one thing you said to make sure I understood it right. Uh, and there is, of course, this choice about who can come, who can replace who, and different jokers in different parts of the world make different choices with different audiences. Are you saying it is it is absolutely your standard practice to say, if it's a woman, only a woman will replace a woman? Exactly. But, but I have to say that uh, we are much less interested in replacement, more and more. We are much more interested that the people in the audience think strategically. Mm -hmm. Strategically, okay, how could we face this problem? Which kind of strategy we have to try? Mm -hmm. And then the people come on stage, they come as their own character, and from their own condition. We ask them to come from their own social position. If I'm, a, I'm, I'm play as a black woman, my whole group is a black woman, and the white woman won't come on stage, we, we're going to ask her, what is your role as anti-racist? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's your role as a white or white man or white woman to face racism? Mm -hmm. I, okay, good. I, no, I, I, I understand. Um, and something occurred to me that has gone out of my head. So I'll, I'll move to a, an, another question. Um, I suppose because we've got to, we've got about 20 minutes left, one of the things which everybody wants to know now is how everybody is dealing with now yes. and what groups around the world. And I suppose you could speak both, uh, both about Brazil and about, and about Germany because before we came on air, we were speaking about the terrible challenges that uh, you face in Brazil. And I, we were suggesting a competition between us all for the world's worst leader, which would be a very challenging competition to have. But what do you anticipate um, coming out of this for Coringa and its role uh, in the future, and then for CTO Rio and its role in the future? So for me, it was really interesting because I am a kind of person that I, in the beginning of this crisis, I found out myself really conservative in the way of using internet. <laughs> I thought I am so open, yeah? But in the way of like, wow, now we are going to be here in front of the computer. I found myself really not uh, so happy. This was first week, second week. And afterwards I thought, oh, let's go to do something because we cannot waiting yeah for something else yeah? mm -hmm. and then i start to call i wrote for everybody that i am in contact to start to use this zoom platform mm -hmm. yeah and then i made in the beginning of uh, in the middle of march i start to make meetings with my group in berlin with kuring the community with together uh, network and the and the black people in brazil i work mm -hmm. with two groups in brazil mm -hmm and that we was working weekly. First, we made like a kind of, for instance, with Madalena Berlin, we work a lot in newspaper theater. We start to try out newspaper theater because we thought, okay, let's see how is the narrative, how sexist is the narrative of Corona crisis? Why is only men speaking this topic? You know, it's like, why only men make decisions when women suffering a lot of violence? Mm -hmm. And then we really stress the, the the newspaper tea activities. So you've been doing newspaper theater on online, Barbara, through, yeah, through the yeah. Theater. yeah. And and just tell us a little bit about that. Um, people come with uh, articles from the from the newspaper or from the internet. How how does that form of newspaper manifest? It's, it's several times, several forms. For instance, with Madalena Berlin, sometimes we made a discussion and uh, we found out several topics and then we discuss the topic and then we all come for our own space and then we create our videos and afterwards we share this video and then we discuss this video but also we made like uh, take a newspaper tears as exercise at the moment just we brought the news and uh, we make these rooms uh, different kind of rooms and the right. people make a discussion, as a parallel rules, yeah, yeah. make a discussion and bring it as, as different ways of doing, like the newspaper techniques. Mm -hmm. Several techniques in newspapers works really nice here. You know, mm -hmm. it's like different ways of reading, mm -hmm. one reading, another acting, mm -hmm. was really interesting. Mm -hmm. And then with, with groups from Brazil, we made a lot of discussion what is going on in Brazil, and also we made performance, we made videos with the Brazilian black women 
we produce a lot of videos to influence in the, our social uh, medias, yeah, uh, because the, the to produce something against violence, you know, the the, the, the sexist violence so growing, and then we start to produce videos to to talk with the people, yeah, to to talk about it, to give our position. So, do you have a sense of what happens next? Um, for Coringa? So I would say like, for instance, for, for, for the group that I work here, Madalena Berlin, we are doing this newspaper theater. All of this is around our play. And then we are imagine when this, we are going to use this in our play. We want to, to incorporate these discussions in our play. You know, we want also to incorporate this way of working in our way of working because sometimes we don't meet because people don't have time and then we discover okay do this here yeah. and then we can have time one yeah. half an hour it's uh, i mean it's one of the few great things about the period that we're in yeah. that people are accessible and people have time for instance we're having this conversation and probably we would not have had this conversation some time ago but it's great that people are available in that sense um there's, there's a couple of questions and we need to leave a bit of time at the end. Um, but there's two questions about how you engage with the oppressor's narrative, or if you engage with the impress, uh, oppressor's narrative. Um, uh, Ava Hunt says at a time when, uh, at this time women's lives are in even more jeopardy the world over as a direct consequence of being locked down locked into domestic violence. Can Tio engage with the oppressor's narrative so that it's not just about rehearsing action for the future, but for the oppressors to understand power relations? So my, personally, uh, I work with the oppressor narrative to empower the oppressed. Yeah, what we are doing, we, we, we investigate a lot of narratives, really. And then uh, we we really investigate the way. Now, for instance, I investigate a lot. I'm doing one specific work with the Together Network with the right wing uh, narratives. We are seeing a lot of their videos. We are reading a lot of their texts because we understand how they afford to communicate, what they are using. Yeah, it's the same thing that I use in my work. We take these narratives, empower the women to understand how society is talking about that. Yeah. So, so to be clear about that, I just want to understand that well, because it's really important, I think, what you're offering here. Um, so, for instance, in an abusive relationship, um, um, would you, are you saying that you would use, as it were, the, the description that the abuser um, describes that situation as part of your text, if you see what I mean? No, to I'm not talking about the abuser as a singular person. I am sure. talking about the narratives that we can find sure. about violence. Yeah? Okay. For instance, if you talk about the, the official narrative about violence, you are going to see the only we are only talk about women. We don't talk about aggressors. Yeah. Right. right. This is, for me, this is the narrative of the oppressors. Actually, mm -hmm. they, they are out. We don't talk about we talk about uh, people that is under violence. We don't talk about the violators. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like a newspaper and read it, yeah. you know? Yeah. And then yeah. we want that women understand it. But I, I, I work with a lot of urgency, yeah? Mm -hmm. it's, it's a lot of group of women with a lot of urgency. And then mm -hmm. we, we really invest our whole time for this urgency. Mm -hmm. It's like I appreciate any other kind of work, but my work is really focused on this urgency. How could we create networks? And, uh, and, this, and the self-protection or care, and also come together with a women organization to overcome, because we know theater is not the place to solve problems, yeah? Okay, um, well, I'm gonna just do about five minutes maximum more questions, because I want you to have some time to talk about your book at the end. Um, there was a, we, we mentioned during our, earlier in our conversation, you mentioned um, that your focus on the aesthetics of the oppressed. Uh, probably not everybody knows uh, that late uh, discovery of Augusto's, as it were, that late area of research, which you were very involved in. Could you describe what you mean by that work, how that work works? 
Yeah, it's like um, what we are doing in the, in the last uh, half, uh, 10 years of working with Boal, the 10, his last decade was dedicated for it. Yeah? yeah, Was dedicated of investigate how to create metaphor, how to create representation of the reality. Yeah, it's like the reality is present for us. This is the reality. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, look the reality. The newspaper say for us every day the aesthetic of the oppressor present a reality. What we want that people look this with critical eyes mm -hmm. and represent how it looks for them. Yeah, it's like to make a representation of the understand how they understand it. Mm -hmm. And this is not only about talking. Yeah, it's not only about explain. And then we are investigate other ways of creating this image of reality mm -hmm. to create metaphor. And uh, we found out for our groups was really hard this exercise because our group was really under the aesthetics of the oppressor. Mm -hmm. They are what we all call under invasion of this officially uh, representation of the world. Yeah, this is about. So in, in simple terms, um, that part of the process is simply making together all the scenic and scenographic elements of the visual side of the representation, um, correct? And, and making those elements together um, and making the texts together and so on and so on. Is that, um, is that how you would? Actually, it's more about uh, re create representations of your understand, yeah? yeah. It's like it can happen in the several ways mm -hmm. to do it. But it's really important that they create, we, we work a lot with metaphorical um, uh, representation, yeah? Mm -hmm. We don't, know to, don't need to reproduce the reality. We can represent it in different ways. Mm -hmm. And then this, these three uh, different channels that we all uh, use to, in, in the aesthetics of the oppressors, word, image, and sound. Yes, yeah, like uh, try to investigate each kind of possibility we have to say how I understood the reality. Mm -hmm. For instance, sometimes we don't pay attention to something and we are going for an exhibition of a photographer and we can be shocked how mm -hmm. these people is revealing something that we know. Mm -hmm. But we didn't, we, we didn't pay attention before seeing these photos. This is aesthetics. Yeah, this he create he he took some part of the reality and show up for us and from that make us to think about the reality. I lo I love this thing that uh, Augusto says is a function of theater and it is he of course shares that function with Brecht of making us look again, making us find things curious, which are curious, encouraging curiosity, encouraging us to see that what we take as normal is not normal, just somebody decided it was normal and now we're supposed to accept that it's normal. I think it's fascinating at this time in this country, I don't know how it is there, but um, things which were normal, like uh, a lot of people on the street, um, a lot of street people, you know, we work with homeless and ex-homeless people, uh, well, suddenly it was realized that actually it wasn't so difficult to put these people indoors. Um, and there are all these hotels and a lot of street, I'm afraid there are still a lot of new people on the street as well who are created as a result of this, uh, as a result of this disaster. But in one go, suddenly it was realized, wow, the way to solve people being on the street is to take them off the street. Um, and it's, it's, it's what does it take for us to see that what we take as normal is not normal. It's just a bloody decision that somebody in power has made. Anyway, sorry, I uh, forgive my little rant. Um, I, I, I'm going to take one more question and then I'd like you to talk a little bit uh, uh, about your book, if that's OK. And I, actually, I don't e even know if this is a question, but it's a question which is hovering there because one of the people listening to you is Katie Rubin, who has, of course, worked with you and, you know, um, created the Theatre of the Oppressed New York. Um, and I suppose I'm interested to know, because we are doing a bit more of it, sometimes with Katie, sometimes with other people. Um, are you still, are you engaged in, in um, legislative theatre still in, yeah. in either country that you have a foot in? 
Yeah. So as, as I, I told you, as a Katie, yeah, thank you for your question. So I I work a lot with legislative theater. I stop it actually to work with legislative theater for long. Stop it by propose. And then there's like uh, when I back, what we made was like how could we make this uh, whole process more feminist more horizontal is because uh, legislative theater has a lot of uh, verticalities that i don't appreciate right. for money. i don't appreciate that have expert that know and come to tell an expert that going to to select uh, the proposed expert that going to find out i was doing this i'm not saying <clears throat> when i say what i i doing i'm doing now is not that i didn't do everything i, I made everything that i'm criticizing you know, and this is the thing. We are here to learn, to try out other ways, yeah? So what we start to do is like continue to invite the expert, but bring the expert of the expertise and bring the other people with their other expertise too. The legislative theater that we, we made, we, we simply uh, reorganize the whole way of the discussion, yeah? And that we prefer to go much more for the situation of seminar in the end and create groups and the experts there with the other people also to bring their contribution. And the result of the proposal, we are going to vote also, but we don't have somebody alone that made a, a kind of synthesis. Yeah, we, 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 we don't use the, the metabo uh, metaphorical, metabolic, what was it? The cell. metabolic cell. Exactly. The metabolic yeah. cell. <laughs> <laughs> we don't use more, for instance, this concept. You know, it's yeah. like, and the, we prefer to be really connected with uh, social organizations and politicians as well, yeah? Uh, but in other, in other kind in the, of... In the uh, horizontal, exactly. horizontal kind of way, yeah. I mean, it's fascinating what a great systematizer Augusta was, he liked a system, he liked a clarity of this, then it goes to there, it goes to these people, the metabolizing cell. I mean, actually, the scientist in Augusta always was still hiding there somewhere. It's so beautiful, too, for understanding, you know, it's like some didactics help us to understand. You know, absolutely. I mean, we, we, we all... Everybody listening loves Augusto. Um, look, we're in our last uh, three minutes, so two things. First of all, I think you should plug your book briefly and tell us um, about it and tell us its name and where we can get it. So please do that first of so all. And then I'd like to have one minute. Thank you. Yeah. It's like the theater of the oppressed, roots and wings, yeah? The, the theory of praxis, yeah? That I wrote it in Portuguese, and afterwards become a, a book in, in Spanish, in Italian, and with my colleagues from UCLA, from US, we translate it into, we produce it, yeah? And then we, you can find there's a book as well, yeah? It's like we have here in Coringa, we have in UCLA, in, in LA, in US, and also in CTO. <laughs> we are in the parallel world of books, yeah? So it's, it's your practice in a book, essentially. <laughs> This is the, the book that I, I mentioned in the beginning, was like uh, my book about the whole base of the TO okay. and how I develop a work in a really practical way for the people who learn the concept as well, not okay. being really reproducer, only reproducer, yeah? Being somebody that is with part and has to appropriate. And I am really happy that this is a main book for a lot of community groups. Well, very good, and I'm sure lots of people will now buy it in this country, and that's great. Um, Barbara, I'm going to give you just one minute, if you'd like to, to just round off. And I think I asked the same question for uh, for Sanjoy last week, really. Uh, the Theatre of the Oppressed, w where now? You've got 30 seconds. But where now? It's here. Yeah, 30 seconds. Here. <laughs> we are here. It's really here. It's really important that we didn't take this idea of social uh, uh, distancing. We yeah. have to say we are physically distant, but yeah. we really find found different ways of being connected and reconnected. You know, it's like the social distancing don't have any sense for us, yeah? The distancing is physical. It needs really nothing to do with social. 
I'm sorry, but I think it'll suddenly cut us off and it's better to leave with dignity. Um, uh, so let's fight social distancing. Let's go the other way. Let's make social connection. Um, thank you so much for speaking to me, Barbara. It's really fascinating and lovely to see you and uh, wish you all luck with the book and with the work of Coringa, which I'm sure you'll get inquiries about and hope to see you soon on in reality, maybe. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much for the invitation. It was really Thank nice. Thank you very much, Barbara. Take care. Ciao. Ciao. Take care. Bye.